You raised most of your money through, well, all of your money through non-corporate PAC money. What's corporate PAC money, and why is that bad for America? Well, that's a really good question. So campaigns are financed in a number of ways, congressional campaigns. And state laws are different. But under federal law, a congressional campaign can legally accept money from individuals and political action committees. And a corporate political action committee is a group that is uh, set up to support the goals of the corporation. And the corporation puts money into the account of the political action committee and then that money can be distributed to candidates to help them get elected. Uh, as a candidate for the United States Senate, from my first day announcing that I was going to do this, I made a pledge not to accept corporate PAC money. And the reason is that if you're accepting money from a corporate PAC, which is money really coming from the corporation, then you may, when you get to the United States Congress, feel somewhat beholden to that corporation. And I think that when individuals are elected to Congress, especially the United States Senate, that they should be representing citizens, their constituents, and not companies. And it is, in my opinion, it is one of the biggest problems we have in trying to solve uh, the issues that our country faces, is corporations financing campaigns. So, to the next question I want to ask, as someone who's going into education, tertiary education, it, uh, one of the statistics is from 2008, we have cut 55% of our tertiary education funding in Arizona. Do you plan to reverse or address that, train, that trend? So, uh, you know, state funding uh, for uh, colleges and universities, you're right, there's been a lot of fund, there's been a lot of cuts of, of, of state money supporting college and universities and community college. And that's a state issue. Now, the federal government has a Department of Education in the executive branch, and there are funds that are often sent to support primary and secondary education. Um, so what you're talking about is a state issue. Now, I personally uh, am very pro-public education. I'm a product of uh, public schools. I feel that every dollar we spend on education is money we're going to get back at a later date. It's an investment in our future. Uh, so you, you won't find a, a, a stronger advocate uh, for, for making sure that schools, include you know, elementary schools and high schools and colleges and universities, have the resources to educate young people. Uh, it, it's so important for our future. Uh, what was the most surprising thing you found out when you hit, when you got into space? As a uh, you know, I'd say the number one thing is the first time you look at Earth as a planet, so you're now in the vacuum of space, you're circling the planet at 17,500 miles an hour from hundreds of miles, and you see this big round ball just floating there. And there's no borders between countries. And you see a very thin atmosphere over the surface of our planet. You know, so thin it's almost like a contact lens on an eyeball. And you realize how fragile this system that we all live in. And you also realize that we're all in this together. You know, all seven and a half billion of us, we pretty much live on an island in our solar system. And people shouldn't be like confused, like there's no, you know, there's no planet B for us out there. I mean, we're all not gonna move someday. We're not gonna terraform Mars and move to it. I mean, people have these, these notions that some, someday we could do that, if we're ever able to do that. It's so far in the future that it doesn't matter. We really need to do a much better job taking care of this planet, and it needs to start today. In on your website, you addressed veterans. How do you, how do you want to improve their life in Arizona? We've got a lot of veterans in Arizona. I'm a veteran. I served in the, the United States Navy for 25 years. You know, I served in. You know, I'm a combat veteran. I flew airplanes uh, during Operation Desert Storm over Iraq and Kuwait. You know, veterans were promised. Um, you know, services after they leave. In a lot of cases, it's, you know, health care through the VA, education benefits. They earn those benefits. Uh, we've got an incredible problem of veteran homelessness here. Uh, it is a 
it is disappointing and sad to see, you know, veterans off, often through, you know, a variety of reasons wind, wind up homeless. Uh, we need to take care of our veterans. And Washington, D.C., especially here in the state of Arizona, has really, has really failed us trying to do a better job, right? The, the VA healthcare system in Phoenix and Tucson, I think they've been doing a little bit better lately, uh, but we still need strong government oversight and we need to get those facilities back on track to, to support and help our veteran community. For the economy and jobs, you said on your website that like, I forget the specific number, but a large number of jobs cannot be filled because of education. How do you plan to fill those jobs and improve the, the economy? Well, we've got to make you know education accessible for more for more young people. I mean, why did it why did it get so expensive? When I was in high school, you know, I went to uh, the U.S. Merchant Marine Academy. It was public federal academy, but I, my my parents were both police officers, and I don't remember that they were in this like state of panic in, in trying to figure out how to pay, pay for my brother's education. Uh, you know, today, college or university education is often so expensive, it's unaffordable uh, for people. And, but to fill these jobs, we need an educated workforce. So we have to figure out what happened. How did, how did school get so expensive? And what can we do to make it more affordable for young people? You know, maybe it's more Pell Grants. Maybe, as an example, we allow, you know, people that had, have college debt to renegotiate those loans. Why does the federal government uh, make money on interest uh, for loaning you know, money to students to go to college? The, the, the government should want them to go to college and be successful. They don't need, government doesn't need to be earning money on interest from, you know, from students. You addressed healthcare on your website. You're for a public option and how do you want to pursue that through being senator? Well, there's different ways you know you could do it. You know, certainly one thing you could do is you could allow individuals at a certain age to buy into Medicare, to pay a premium to get me Medicare coverage. And what that would do is it would take those individuals, maybe individuals between the age of 55 to 65 who would like to buy into Medicare, would take them out of the market for folks under the age of 55. And, you know, often individuals start to have some more significant health care needs as they get older, as they, you know, pass through their 50s. So removing them from the, from the market will lower the price for individuals under the age of 55. You could also have a public option in states that have little competition uh, on the health care exchange where people are buying private insurance. Uh, when there's not a lot of competition, you know, prices tend to go up people have to pay more. So, you know, that's that that's that's an option as well. Uh, you know, I strongly believe that in our country today, we're the wealthiest country this planet has ever seen, we should be able to provide a way for individuals to get good health care coverage that they can get if they have a pre-existing condition, that they're not going to get kicked off of if they get sick, that they can keep, um, currently, you can stay on your parents health care plan if you're under the age of 26. There are members of Congress that don't agree with that, that have voted numerous times to take away the protection that if you have a pre-existing condition or if you get sick and it starts to get expensive or if you're you know a young person under the age of 26, there are a lot of members of Congress that have voted to take away those protections. And it's just taking us in the wrong direction. We need to figure out how to provide good health care coverage to more people, not less. Okay, thanks. Be excellent. Yeah, you too.